You know, I, I, I had this guy speak at my church one time. He was, a, he was one of those guys that went overseas to a Papua New Guinea, you know, learned a, a, the language of this tribe. They had all four kids out there, raised their kids in the jungle, led the tribe to the Lord, translated the New Testament into their language for the very first time, you know, after 20-something years. And it's just one of those beautiful stories. And he shares, and, he, and, and at the end, he says, you know what, I owe it all to my youth pastor, Vaughn. I thought, wow, that's really cool. His youth pastor, he was going to be a professional surfer. And when his youth pastor spoke, he changed his mind. He said, no, I'm going to the nations. I'm going to give my life up. The next week, I had another guy speak at my church who was with World Vision telling us to sponsor kids. And when he was at the end of his message, he goes, you know what? The reason why I do this today is because of my youth pastor, Vaughn. I thought, wow. And I asked him after, I go, are you in the same, same Vaughn as last week we had this guy? He goes, oh, yeah, he was in my group. Like, that's amazing. Next week, I have a guy from the Union Rescue Mission come and speak, and he's talking about the inner city and caring for those in there. And he didn't mention Vaughn. But I, I talked to him. I talked to him afterwards. I go, Dan, wasn't it weird that the last two weeks they mentioned Vaughn? And he looks at me, he goes, I know Vaughn. And he says, I went with Vaughn one time. He, he works in uh, Tijuana, Mexico. He, he's a pastor in San Diego, but he takes him down over the border and, and he cares for the poor. He goes to these dumps where no one wants to go. And he goes, it was weird. I was walking with him and, and, and kids would just run up to him and, and grab him and he would have food for them. He'd clean them up, wipe them. They'd be all dirty and he would just hug them. He didn't care. You know, every village we went to, it just seems like all the people would flock to him. And, and here's what Dan said. He goes, Francis, it was eerie. It was so strange strange. He goes, because the whole time I was walking with him, I thought to myself, if Jesus was on the earth, this is what it would feel like to walk with him. And he says, the day I spent with Vaughn was the closest thing I've ever experienced to walking with Jesus. I'll never forget those words because it was at that moment I thought, man, that's an amazing compliment to say to someone. But my second thought was, would anyone say that about me? Would anyone say the day I spent with Francis, it was weird. I felt like I was walking with Jesus. And that hour I was with him, and it was like I was walking with Jesus. He just loved everyone. Everyone he came up to, he just served them however he could. He just kept loving, loving, loving. You see, in America, you don't have to act like Jesus to be a successful pastor. I'm proof of that. You just have to be able to speak well, communicate well. You can be a good musician, and, and you'll be a, a famous Christian musician. It has nothing to do with being like Jesus. But at the end of the day, we've got to change our idea of success. And what does it mean to be successful? Success is, man, here's success. is for one day someone to say, being with you, it felt like walking with Jesus. That's my goal in life. That's my desire in life. And if your desire is anything else, then we're missing it. How in the world did we get here where we have people who call themselves Christians and act nothing like Jesus? And we just say these weird things, oh, but they are in their heart. And they've memorized so much and they know so much. It's not what scripture says. It says when we know him, we'll, we'll walk like him. We'll live like him. And people will hang out with us and go, wow, you, you're acting just like that Jesus. And this is what it would have felt like to walk with him. So what's the next step in my journey? I have no idea. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'm, I'm very confident of who, what I want to be and what I want to be like. And what form that takes, it really doesn't matter. I just want that. You know, and I want my life to be on a trajectory like that. And I don't think it's coincidental that I'm here tonight. Because I'm willing to bet that there's some of you in this room that it's time for a change. And maybe it's a change right where you are. A change of your mindset, the way you're doing ministry. Maybe some of you, you're saying, man, I, I, don't know, I don't remember the last time someone left the church or my youth group going, wow, your Jesus is God. They've just been looking at all the physical human side of things rather than seeing the Holy Spirit actually work. And maybe it's because you haven't really surrendered your life and this desire to be this famous 
you know, Christian or to have this big church or this big following or whatever else. Jesus didn't have that. When I was in high school and I became a Christian, my first prayer was, God, don't let me lose my friends. I didn't want to be Jesus. I wanted to be a more popular version of Jesus. I did. <laughs> Who wants to get spit on, rejected? I mean, the truth is, and, and the nice thing was no one told me I needed to be like Jesus. But as I read the scriptures, I go, no. He wasn't popular. The only people that were popular were the false prophets. And he says, woe to you when all men speak well of you. Because that's why your fathers treated the false prophets. But blessed are you when they persecute you, when they insult you falsely on my name's sake. Great is your reward in heaven. The world hates you. Keep in mind, it hated me first. No servant's going to be better than his master. If they, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you also. And Jesus, that's why Paul says, look, I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection and to share in the fellowship of his sufferings. Because I want to suffer like Jesus. I want to become like Jesus. And I guess my question for you tonight is, have you gotten off track? And has something else become the goal of your life? Or are you still at the very core of your being saying, make me like Jesus. Help me suffer what I need to suffer. Because I want to rise again like he rose again. I want to reign with him. I want to sit on the throne with him. So right now it's time for me to incarnate him and go and love and live this selfless life like Christ. I'm going to have the worship team come up right now. And we're going to have a time where, you guys, I, I, I believe so much in the power of prayer. I, I really do. That's why I asked you. That was not a formality. Uh, I, I just thought, ah, I want this to be real. And I want something real to happen. And I can't make or talk someone into saying, I want to become like Jesus. Because maybe some of you, because this is the church system we've lived in for so long, maybe you were never told you were actually supposed to be like Jesus. It's a crazy thing. But we neglect the fact that we were supposed to be called little Christs. It's weird. Being with him is like being like Christ. That's why they called, started calling him Christians. Like, man, you guys all act like Christ. I'm going to call you Christian. Maybe you didn't even realize that's where the word came from. And that's what we're supposed to be. And I just keep thinking, what if, I, what if it changed? See, I don't think people say, oh, people in America reject Jesus. And I go, I'm not so sure of that. I'm just not sure they've really seen him. They've heard about him. They heard about what he was like. But our job was to do more than to talk about him. I'm saying, I want you to walk like him talk like him, love like him, sacrifice like him, suffer like him. And maybe you've just lost that focus. And maybe you just feel like maybe even trapped in your ministry. Like, wow, how can I do that and still accomplish all this other stuff? I'm just saying, don't worry about it. Your, your primary responsibility is to become like Jesus. That's what you were saved for. It's what you were destined for to be conformed to the image of his son. This is not about being a pastor today. I'm talking about being a Christian and following Jesus. So there came a point when I had to step away from the ministry and go, you know what? It's not because I'm being, I'm, I'm not, it's not about ministry. It's about me. I'm not seeing myself become more like Jesus. So I gotta step away because that's got to be the primary goal of my life.